And welcome to Play Comics, the show where I look at video games based on comic book properties and how well they stick to that source material. I'm running solo today because the last episode was eaten by a time bandit, and we are looking at Uncanny X-Men from 1989, released by LJN on the regular Nintendo. So, Jay and Miles call X-Men the comic's greatest superhero soap opera, and... I mean, it's really something I can get behind because you have such a giant rotating cast of characters. You have your pretty core set, for the most part, that'll stick around for a while. And then they'll just kind of mix people in. If they work, they work and they stick around. If they don't, they're gone. It's not really a super set lineup like you have in a lot of other books. I'm not going to get into everyone because there are literally hundreds of people that are in the X-Men but the ones that we're going to worry about for the game are Wolverine, Cyclops, Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, and Iceman. So Wolverine, just in case you don't know, gritty, soft-hearted if you kind of get on his good side. And he's got some regenerative powers. Plus, you know, he's just really awesome at fighting. Originally, his claws were not really part of his power set. Neither was that adamantium skeleton that he has. But when you have your regeneration stuff in there, having the claws, you know, rip out of your skin doesn't really hurt you. Having the skeleton ripped out of you and a new one put in doesn't hurt you. Cyclops is your kind of de facto team leader. He has concussive blasts. It's just beams of pure force that come out of his eyes. You know, a lot of people think it's lasers or fire or some kind of weirdness. It's concussive blasts. My assumption here is that they're colored in the comics. You can actually see what's going on. And that red color is kind of what gets people to think it's a laser. Storm is kind of your alternate team leader here on a lot of things. She controls the weather. She's also pretty well trained as a thief. So she's kind of a badass when she doesn't have her powers. Nightcrawler is kind of stuck in his little blue form all the time. He teleports. He's super agile. He can hide in the shadows. He is your thief character for every video game you've ever liked playing a sneak around thief character with colossus goes metal when he's metal he's pretty much invulnerable he doesn't need to breathe he doesn't need to eat he doesn't need to do hardly anything besides just be super strong he's pretty much the strongest character here on the x-men when he's metal even when he's not metal he's just like a six foot seven russian dude so he's pretty imposing figure no matter what and finally, here in the game, we have Iceman, whose power is to kind of go ice mode. He can control all the water vapor around him, turn his body into ice, turn anything around him pretty much into ice. He can make ice slides, pretty much invulnerable ice things. The enemies in the X-Men 2 are pretty much just as varied as the main characters here. Um, in the game, you have Boomerang, Sabretooth, Juggernaut, the White Queen, and Magneto. The enemies are a little bit more straightforward. You know, Boomerang has boomerangs, and he attacks with that. Sabretooth is kind of your bad guy analog to Wolverine. Juggernaut has a helmet that makes him super strong. The White Queen is part of the Hellfire Club, which is an or evil organization kind of bent on taking over the world. And Magneto is your on-again, off-again villain who... Sometimes it helps out the X-Men, but for this particular game, is looked at as a villain. I mean, you're never going to get an all-encompassing game. There's just way too much nuance, there's way too much history, and especially in this era here with the regular Nintendo, there's just not enough room. So, we're going to take a quick little break here, drop a promo for another show, and then start looking at the game that you're here to see in the first place. I was a fool to think that everything would change after I'd watched my stories each week. My soaps are over, and there's nothing left now. Nothing but the long, cold hours until they air again. I thought it would be a good thing to finally be rid of them, to have my life back. And yet, what a life. Such a lonely existence without them. 
sitting in dark cafes, brooding over cold coffee, staring while the column of ash on my cigarette withers to oblivion, waiting, waiting. And then I found them at last, the Soapy Madams podcast. They talk about British and American soap operas and soap opera tropes as well. It's a miracle. At last, I can feel 30 or 40 minutes of that cold, dark, silent time with the whimsical voices of the soapy madams. They have soap talk, guests, discussions of soaps from around the world, and games. Oh, so many games. You can find them on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or at soapymadams at podbean.com. Dare to dream. Dare to listen. Dare to soap yourself into a lather on the Soapy Madams podcast. (laughs) All right, now back to our show. So... LJN, just like every other game that they put out for regular Nintendo, kind of shot the bed. I have no idea why they kept getting publishing things. I have no idea what they drugged everybody with to try to convince them that they should be allowed to touch anything. But they kept getting these licensed titles. It might have just been because they could promise to get them put out on time. And hoping that people would buy it because it's X-Men or because it's Jaws or anything else like that. But they're bad. They're just really bad. I mean, they made a game where Colossus sucks. Wolverine is basically unplayable. Nightcrawler is really only useful because there's one level where it's pretty easy to get trapped. And he can teleport through walls. So if you do get trapped, he can go. Basically, if you want to play this game, you want to be Cyclops or Storm or Iceman the entire time because you want to have that ranged attack. Anything close quarters in this game is just horrible. You always have two characters on your side. If you're playing single player, then the computer controls the other one. If you're playing two players, then, you know, obviously you have your friend with you and things go a little bit better because if the computer is controlling the other character for you, then that other character is horrible and dies. So you might as well make him Wolverine because he's horrible and he doesn't have any kind of regeneration in this game. Basically, on these levels, you're going through Zelda dungeons, except there's no puzzles. So it's all the annoying parts where you just have to run through and beat every stupid enemy in the room before you can get out these do kind of scroll a little bit better whereas zelda you have your squares that you have to get out of so i mean that part is good and once you get to a boss a timer starts which is just ridiculous the boss is set up so that it's like they're waiting to see you and then they start the timer for a time bomb so you have to beat the boss and hope you left yourself enough room on the timer to get out of the level and when you get out of the level the only thing it shows you is text on a screen saying yay you got out let's go on to the next level and that's pretty much every level in the game it is ridiculous there's four levels in the proper part of the game they do have a practice one where you can go in and you know just kind of make sure you know what you're doing which Honestly, if you ask me, it's completely unneeded because you should never be playing this game anyway. The final level here is a secret one. You have to press a secret combination of buttons to get to it. They kind of hint to it on the back of the game. The idea from what I read was that they wanted you to kind of pick up clues throughout the game to actually be able to get to the final level so that you had to actually beat all the other ones to get there. But it's not really worth going to. It's just more of the same. You're running through every single level that honestly looks like you're just miniaturized and trapped inside of an 80s futuristic computer game thing. And you just run through. It's 
almost impossible to tell what's a wall and what's just textures on the floor. The in-game sprites are horrible, although I do have to admit that the ones in the menu screens really aren't that bad. But I mean, really, you could do this whole game as anything besides X-Men and it would make just as much sense and it would be just as horrible. There is no reason at all to have this be an X-Men game. At all. There is nothing about the characters that says this needs to be X-Men. There is nothing about the enemies that even really tells you who they are. Except for Boomerang who throws boomerangs. Everybody else is basically just a generic enemy who brute forces their way through you. And there's just nothing at all about this game that has to be X-Men. I mean, really, you make an X-Men game where there's absolutely no reason to be Wolverine. At this point in X-Men history, Wolverine hadn't gone and supersaturated the market yet. He was still a badass character that everybody loved, and nobody was really getting sick of by being everywhere. How do you make Wolverine unplayable? It is ridiculous. The regular enemies are just random shapes. Random little robot guys. It's You can't tell who they are because they're not supposed to be anybody. The game really just appears to end because of that stupid final level secretness that they tried to set up. You just go through, oh yay, you beat the White Queen's forces. Yay! It's stupid. Game Facts, you know, like the end-all, be-all that it is, has 12 reviews for this game. One of them, out of those 12, is above two stars. I'm willing to bet that somebody did it ironically, or somebody went and lied, or somebody, this was the only game they had growing up, and they loved it because you just tried to love every game you had because you spent money on it three reviews including that one are above one star there's absolutely no reason to play this game i don't know why it exists um if you want to learn about x-men you are going to be much better off going to a comic store and just grabbing whatever random x-men comic you can get your hands on because you're going to learn so much more only redeeming quality about this game at all is the menu screen where you can sit there and look at a really short character bio for the six people that are actually in the game other than that unless you just really want to torture yourself or torture a friend there is no reason to play this at all So that's pretty much it. Play Comics has been recorded in Charleston, South Carolina, where it is unseasonably cold, but at least it's warmer than Antarctica. Music is by Audionautics because I don't have the skills to pull that off. All the -the behind-the-scenes stuff by me. Special thanks to Donna Hume for letting me drop the promo for Soapy Madams in there. It fits thematically, and she's cool, so why not? Go check us out at playcomics.com. You can catch us on all your normal favorite podcatchers. Twitter at PlayComicsCast, Facebook, and all the cool Facebook podcasting groups. And I'm just excited for what the new year is going to bring us. 